now everybody welcome back to another podcast we're here with sarah raise your hand mm. we're here with uh, yasmin continue being freakishly clean and prepared yeah as you can see we we sw we switched the spots so she's a little over worried now because she's racist because i'm asian i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> you know what Technically, I changed my seat, so now I'm closer to you. That just means you value looking not as wide what do we value? on the side <laughs> over being <laughs> clean. <laughs> yeah. Also, nice uh, reflective jacket, sweater. Oh, sweater! Really standing. We know who the star of the show is now. We so. do. It's color coded. <laughs> <laughs> and they mint this guy. Yeah, were you guys able to buy something like that in this past week? Because they're all out now, huh? If you are out, I will put a, an eBay link below the video. And they're on sell a sale it per now. Sheets? Are you going to sell yes. your stock per sheet? And it's $10,000. You're welcome. 10000 per sheet or for the bag? For the bag. Okay. Yeah, I'm not that stingy and greedy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, yeah. Now that you got that out of your system, are we uh, ready to proceed forward? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we do have a pretty, uh, pretty interesting show for you today. A great show. Um, we're going to actually talk about Contagion. Uh, the movie came out in 2011, Steven Soderbergh. Uh, and we're going to try this format. I haven't seen the movie in years, so I don't quite remember what's going on. So we're going to have Sarah and Yaz I watched explain it last to me. Night. I watched it two t two nights ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, Friday night. So they're going to be explaining, reviewing, and talking about the relevance of uh, Contagion, the movie starring uh, Matt Damon. Um, but how has, since we're on the topic and since we're going to have a, a discussion on the movie, how have you guys been dealing with the whole COVID-19 situation? It doesn't impact my life that much because i'm not going out that often um yeah and we were pretty lucky that we had everything in our fridge before this whole situation but i've heard from you guys that you went to like grocery stores and you had quite an experience yeah i had a friend who like a little over a week ago just went crazy and like bought as much disinfectant he loaded up the trunk of his car and sent me pictures of like canned food his whole front of the fireplace was covered in canned food and i was like this guy is overreacting but now he's over prepared because i went to go buy some of the same shit he did and they're all out all the stores so i'm i think the best i could do was buy 40 pounds of chicken and have that stocked and ready for the armageddon or the uh, apocalypse yeah, well, the supermarket I went to, all the chicken was gone, but there were tons of turkey. Turkey. Now gobble, you know gobble. all the where all the uh, chickens went to Mike's fridge. Uh huh. Took all the chicken. Well, someone took all the beef, so well, I had to take all the chicken. I guess I'll take Mass the turkey hysteria then. hysteria going on. Like the NBA, it sucks. I lo so look forward to the NBA, and that was the first to go right with Rudy Gobert I testing I positive. I think I saw one of the last basketball games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw the last basketball game. They had another schedule that day, and they ended up canceling that game too. Um, it was like the Pelicans versus someone else that they ended up canceling. Yeah. But yeah, no, this, this stuff got like super real in like less than a week. Yeah, so. everything changed really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Ooh. Anyways, I hope you guys are um, dealing with it okay, and I hope mm -hmm. you guys are feeling healthy um you know i feel like i think we're doing the best we can i, yeah. I no longer feel people are overreacting i think overreacting is way better than being underprepared so and we yeah. got to look out for uh the people who are at higher risk right that's part of the game too is you know even though it sucks that there's no nba i get it i guess <laughs> so and then all these movies being pushed back yeah. what about me can they just open up the theater just for me i don't want black widow to be delayed can we have one person screenings at theaters man how much would you pay for a for a ticket during these days i think since people are scared to go out so 
the theaters would be like pretty empty so there would be no but are they op- are they open no they closed probably but uh, yeah but how much would you pay to like have them open it up for just you uh probably i'm a my like stingy personality will kick in so i will not pay yeah. why me why i have to me pay? too i, I think guess I... it depends on the movie like the avengers i would pay like 100 bucks i think i'd pay 20 bucks. bucks 20 bucks is the most you'd pay uh-huh. for so. the whole theater yes and you in it <laughs> oh my uh-huh. god <laughs> well luckily we got streaming we're gonna be more connected via yeah. virtual yeah i i felt like that with the new season of uh westworld Westworld. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's coming up. Or the first episode was released, right? I haven't gone around to it. I, Have I haven't. It? No, I haven't watched it yet. I wait for a few episodes to come, to come out, and then I will watch them all at once. What about, how do you guys feel about, what if we fill up the stands with like iPads, and then if you had a ticket, you can like put on a virtual real, VR goggles and be like you're in the crowd. That way there's some crowd noise. That'd as well cool. i was thinking about because i actually watched ufc is like not canceling mm-hmm. they had a fight event this oh, really? weekend just no audience and that was the weirdest like fight i've ever seen it, it's like the ultimate fighter because they don't really have a big audience either but you can hear everything every slap is magnified Whoa. every punch every thud and uh yeah the energy wasn't there so i was thinking you know like at least you put ipads with heads on them <laughs> cardboard <laughs> cutouts and maybe some fan crowd noise or something because it was just odd some to see dummies it. in the seats yeah mm-hmm. all right well why don't we um do you guys want to fill the viewers in on anything uh, new anything exciting um that's uh in your lives or any shows that you want to recommend before we get into contagion you know i just want to like recommend everyone to start watching uh love is blind oh yeah i love that show yeah because we also talked about it a little bit in our previous podcast Mm -hmm. and at that time you watched it i have i hadn't watched it yet back then but i been so watching. the uh, love is blind virus has spread to you and it's yet to get to sarah but she will catch it you know yeah. oh it'll yeah. come soon <laughs> yes i feel like that uh it's a good it's a good show especially for me that i'm coming from bachelor nation to watching this so why do you like oh. it what do you find it more interesting than the bachelor yeah definitely i feel like it's deeper the quality obviously is so much better uh like many details in these shows are uh, are very similar, especially about the date, the dating part. Like everything feels a little bit staged, uh, with helicopter dates and like Mexico trips and stuff. It's so it's similar in that ca- uh, in that um, sense to Bachelor, but I think the main difference is that in this show, you I mean each contestant is finding. Um, is dating only another person, uh, one person at a time. So when it, when things are serious, so mm. you will see wow. like more deeper connections and a lot of like conversations are very uh, like very realistic because if you watch the show, you will know that the first phase is the pot phase, the second phase is the honeymoon phase, and the third phase is that the couples are actually living in the real world they move in together so for those that didn't understand in one sentence what is love is blind what is the concept to to sarah why don't you tell sarah Uh, oh yeah so to convince her what is a one sentence one sentence concept okay is a hypothesis to test if love is blind if you can find someone solely based on the personality Okay, and so you don't know what they look like? They, you don't know what they look like. People are starting dating each other in an isolated uh, pod, which there is a wall in between them, so they cannot see the other person. They okay. can only talk and talk. And Was it an earthquake? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> We're, too bad this isn't live. People can see us get crushed yeah, if it is an earthquake. Yeah. No, I don't think so. What's going okay. on with this buzzing sound? Yeah, no, it's it's a super interesting concept. We don't want to spoil any more of it mm. for for you, but 
Sarah, you should watch it. And uh, for people who haven't watch. seen it, if you if you want to see the evolution of Netflix's reality show, it's like they hit a they hit a pretty good home run, I think, with uh, with Love Is Blind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. oh. All right, guys, we're back. We had a little technical difficulty with the uh, Rhino slider. Had to recalibrate it really quick, but all is well in mm-hmm. gear land. So uh, where did we leave off? We talked about we Watch about Love, Love is Blind. Blind. Yes. Okay. What else are, What else do you guys want to talk about before we get into it? Oh, I watched a movie this weekend. What would you, would you see? It's called The Leprechaun. Is that a horror movie with a leprechaun? Yes. Yes, it is. How, it's oh an early God. 90s movie. Gosh. And it is the most ridiculous Warwick Horror. Davis? Yeah, Warwick Davis is the leprechaun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He runs around Jennifer singing Aniston songs. in this movie? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. It was like one of her first roles. Yeah. A leprechaun. You just w- wait until you get Leprechaun 10, Leprechaun in Space or something. Actually, that's Leprechaun 4. Oh, four. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to go through a whole binging of like the Leprechaun series? You know, I'm kind of tempted. Because it was just one of those movies where you just love to hate it i think it's one of those classic it's like on the list of like um best bad movies it's, yeah it's, it's like, so bad and you're just sitting there screaming but you know that's the fun part yeah and the character is just so stupid they did one smart thing in the movie and i was so surprised but the rest of the time i was yelling at them because they were stupid oh okay so that's why you scream at them it's not because you are scared it's because oh, no, everything it's is scary. so terrible like, uh, there's this one scene where the leprechaun gets a pogo stick and he pogos. Oh my gosh, people to death. And yeah, he does pogo. That's part of the to charm death. to these like killing movies, right? Is how creative they can get with like the, the movie deaths, mm-hmm. you know? So, oh my gosh, a leprechaun in space. Yeah, that's leprechaun four. Wow. <laughs> they right. actually came out with one. The latest one was in 2018. And then that was leprechaun origins. Oh man. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, doesn't have I don't want Davis this to be it. serious. Like, let's just keep the B movie, the B film movie type fun. Yeah, right. Yeah, like bad B movies. What do you guys think? Should we should we have a, a in depth detailed discussion on Leprechaun Four, Leprechaun Please in don't Space? Make me do that. <laughs> No, <laughs> you don't want to take because I want to. Whenever we prepare for movies, we we like take you know a good five hour chunk of our time to sit down, watch, and dissect a movie. Mm-hmm. So you know should what? we should we force Yaz to watch Leprechaun mm-hmm. Four, Leprechaun in Space? No, yes. you know what? The answer is yes. We will fall if we want to do that. I'm okay as long as I am the person who is not watching it <laughs> and I'm asking questions with your according to your new <laughs> format. <laughs> Yeah, our new format. So we're going to try this out today. And, uh, you know, the thought process, I guess we can share a little bit behind that is, you know, um, they're going to treat me like I'm a viewer at home. So regardless if you've seen it or not, they're going to explain what the story is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, you you guys will see it unfold. Just watch. Just watch. We think we got something good going on here. Mm -hmm. Um, So, all right. We talked about um, we talked about COVID. Uh, Should we get into the movie Contagion. Yeah, let's yes. do it. Why don't we do it? Mm-hmm. Who, okay, so what the hell? It's been a while. I know. I'll tell you what I know, and you guys can fill it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Contagion, Steven Soderbergh. I love Steven Soderbergh. He did all the Oceans movies. He did um, lo- something lucky. It was like Adam Driver was a star mm-hmm. of it. Um, Channing Tatum. You guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, something lucky. I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's really good with like big ensemble casts. And from what I remember, this was like a huge cast as yeah. well. Yeah, mm-hmm. there are many um, characters. Yeah, and then it has something to, to do with like the DZ. So can someone explain to me like what the general story is like in a sense or two? Like what's what's the gist? So a viral outbreak happens and grips the entire world. And you see... You follow characters who are ordinary people dealing with it and people in the health field and people in the government. Yeah. Okay. So what's the, what's the main like, uh, conflict then? So is it like, like man versus disease or something? Yeah. You can tell that it's mostly like a lot of conflicts. So there are like many, so this is, uh, the general structure of the movie is much more like a documentary movie, if you can call that, because there are multiple storylines that you can see 
uh, about this outbreak but in general the main fight or the main villain of this uh, movie is the virus so who are the main like protagonists okay so we have like um like who uh, i know matt damon's in it right who's yes. he so mm-hmm. matt damon is actually is a regular just just like a regular person so he's representing us who happen to be like eh, common people i mean just regular mm-hmm. people um just a joe Schmo, a good old good old boy yep. yeah yeah and uh, we have um kate winslet we have Marion Cotillard. Titanic fame. <laughs> so we have her. We have Marion Cotillard and we have uh, oh, uh, Lawrence uh, Fishburne. Oh, Fisherburn. Morpheus. Uh, so Zion. They are they are on a scientist side. So they are people from CDC, Center for Disease Control, and uh, also. Mm, World Health Organization or w, uh, is it WHO? Yeah. So they are the main characters who try to beat this virus. But we have we also see sub stories about like politicians a little bit, and also another character we have, which is Jude Law. So those characters that you'd mentioned first: Matt Damon, Lawrence Fishburne, Marion Cotillard, um, Kate Winslet. They're the main characters. You see them all throughout the movie from beginning to end. Those, uh, those no, are like the main like that. protagonists. Y- y- or do you see them more than anyone else? Y- they are main characters, but it's not the the whole movie is not dedicated to them. So Matt Damon and uh, Lawrence Fisher. Uh, uh, yeah, Lawrence. Uh, uh, he is. Uh, you, you will see them throughout the movie. But with characters like uh, Kate Winslet, she has a part. Then her character um, eliminates, uh, get eliminated uh, throughout the. It's series. a nice way of saying she expired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she expired. So you will well, see okay. characters like that. Maybe you can. Um, so set me up. How did they? How did they? What was the intro to to the movie? How did they set it up? Like, did they make it interesting? How did they get to that hook of okay? So there's a disease. Like, can you like describe okay. to me how okay. the movie started? It's the scariest things especially watching it in the corona days the movie starts with a cough which happens to be the scariest sound Black these and a cough yeah these days so the movie starts with a cough sound it's as sarah says it's black screen Do you, so you don't know who the cough is you don't know you screen will turn on and you will see an airport Mm-hmm. Set uh, an airport like location, and yeah, you, then see... you see Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, so was it Gwyneth's cough? Yes, yeah, okay. So Gwyneth coughs, and then and then what happens? Do we follow her? Yeah, we will follow her a little bit, and you can tell that she doesn't feel good, okay. like she has like a little bit fever, and she's talking on phone um, with someone that you don't know. Mm-hmm. who is and they are discuss um they are saying that oh how it was great that they met and they had the chance to like meet each other after a while so you don't nothing yet mm-hmm. at this stage spidey senses are tingling what happened there okay i'm not going to uh, spill it now but it is not imp- that important now but what is important is that in the meantime you will see K- uh, like Gwyneth Paltrow is passed because she is at an airport at a coffee shop at a coffee place at an airport and she is passing her card to people like, uh, to like a waiter oh credit card yeah credit oh, card okay. yeah sorry sorry uh, yeah it was her credit card she's, mm-hmm. she's like I was passing. like why is she passing fucking no, 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 poker no, no, no. playing cards to people <laughs> no no no, no sorry it was gambit? her credit card <laughs> and you know touching surfaces in this movie is like one of the scariest things because you will see different shots of like people of people touching doorknobs or people touching tables or people touching each other so this is all in like the first minute five minutes or something like yeah. that yeah. yeah you just show yeah, the, the things that has, she's getting into contact with it also shows others um, yes other people who you perceive as random in the beginning um touching things and like starting okay. to look like so the intro is a lot sick. of touching yes. and then we know something's up with gwyneth Okay. Yes, and you will okay. see different locations across the world. You will see Hong Kong, 
and you will see uh, London. London and you will see um, Chicago Chicago and yeah because city a lot of cities with large populations yes okay and you will see the populations written down on the screen say that oh this is the city of like 2.6 million so are they trying to show like the potential scope i guess yes um, yeah. okay. and you can see that how the disease um basically uh transfers throughout the world by people traveling was um soderbergh's um uh intro hook um engaging did he do did he do a good job in terms of like getting you engaged early on in the beginning scenes i think it was really engaging mm -hmm. particularly because of current events so maybe if i watch this like yeah back in, ago, back in 2011 i wouldn't have been as like it wouldn't have made me as anxious as it did but watching all like the touch points and um the all the details became all the impactful details. to you yeah. i still think it was it would have been an engaging beginning um, but it's even more engaging now. Okay. Yes. Okay, so what happens next? So we we follow Gwyneth. We see some random people touching each other. Um, who, who are the next people we see? Um, so Gwyneth is So we're in Act 1, right? Can you give yeah. me a general, like, what is Act 1 kind of? What is the arc in Act 1? So the is it uh, just like establishing? I think that the act one is more uh, about the spread of virus across the globe. Yeah, the spread of the virus and how um, health officials start to take notice mm -hmm. and how they react to it and yes. to start oh, to identify and track. Two. Okay. Yeah. And they do they just skip past Gwyneth or does something? What happens so to her? So you will see her uh, going back to her home, to hometown in Minneapolis. Uh -huh. um, back Ooh. to his husband. Cold so, sorry, back to her um, loving husband. Who's her husband? Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. Ooh, Matt Damon, born. And okay. they have like a, they have a child, like a little boy that you will see at the beginning of the movie. Okay. And just like, I don't know, two days after the incident. Yeah, she gets in like in the first ten minutes of the movie, she gets more, uh, more and more sick, and then she dies. Yes. Well, then that's a hook for you. First <laughs> yes. ten minutes, you take a famous actress uh -huh. that you yes. think is gonna. And she's not well, back. Well, you know what? We I don't know how things are gonna be released, but we just rewatched the trailer and I watched it with them of Contagion. I guess mm -hmm. they revealed that in the movie trailer. They did. So, but yeah, that 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 would get to me. I see Gwyneth, yes. poor old yeah. Gwyneth, die in the first ten minutes. So yes. that Fact. sets up like the seriousness, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and right after she dies. Um, in the movie chronologically almost literally right after she dies her son also dies yes oh geez so did they do anything to set up by the way to set up these characters or is it just like the impact of we know gwyneth paltrow and she dies in the first 10 minutes like really that was impactful enough so they didn't really set up the characters okay yes there is nothing that you know uh, much about the characters you just okay. that's why i'm saying that you are kind of like giving the vibe of a documentary movie because you see different things happening around the world and this movie is not about the characters yeah it's not about it's, character development or how yes. care um how characters might is it, change is it not uh, there are no so. changes to matt damon's character they don't do that much not serious not big changes i don't think no no that's well what i'm just asking questions i don't i don't know so. no no you you might because yeah, as i said like matt damon is one of the few characters that you will see him throughout the movie yeah you can say in that sense that you will see a little bit of development with his character because he yeah. comes from a place of shock then grief over her wife then so how does he handle so let's get back to the first act so mm -hmm. you just told me that uh gwyneth paltrow she gets sick and dies within the first 10 minutes and he's she's married to matt damon um wh what happened after that wh what matt else damon is, is in denial because at uh while they were still in the hospital the doctor, uh, the, do the doctors come out and telling Matt Damon that in despite of all their efforts, mm -hmm. unfortunately, Gwyneth Paltrow is dead now. And Matt Damon first reaction is that, oh, can I talk to her? Uh -huh. And they said, sorry, sir, we just told you that Jeez, she couldn't man. make it. 
and she was like, "How come it's possible? We were just at home making coffee." Yeah, that coffee. would be such a shock. Like one day you have a wife, and then the next day some strange doctor is saying that your wife's dead mm-hmm. or your close one is mm-hmm. dead. Yeah, like, yeah, and that's the thing with the virus in this movie; it acts really fast, so yes. people are just taken out. Bam. Did she like look significantly sicker? Um, through, I know she was only on screen for ten minutes, but did she get all like fucked up? So, yeah. so one thing that you will understand from the very first few scenes is that uh, people. It starts with like something related to their uh, lungs and respiratory parts of their body. So people have like breathing problems, but eventually they will have seizure. So this is how Gwyneth Paltrow uh, was rushed to the hospital because she, you will see her before uh, that she, uh, she so was having a... So that's the end stage, it's the yeah. seizure? Yeah. Okay. So it's like impacting not only the um, respiratory, uh, upper respiratory system, but also the nerve or neurotic system, if you can call that. Uh, I'm not a doctor, obviously. <laughs> Did they indicate at this point how the disease is transmitted? No, no. So okay. at this point, you are just in shock and you are discovering about the scope of disease uh, because also you can, in the, at the same time, you can see all around the world that other people are also getting um, uh, into trouble by like just getting into contact with each other. Yeah, you like, see more people dying. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, uh, what happens next, Sarah? Um, you you guys told me that um, Matt Damon is shocked. Mm-hmm. Why don't you take it from there? What what happened? Um, so then he goes home, and his stepson. Um, and on the way home, he gets a call from the babysitter, like so saying, "Oh, something's wrong with uh, the son." He goes home, and the son is dead. Cause he also looks like he had a seizure, so he died the same so way. So, dude in a day loses his son and his wife? Yes. Uh-huh. But later you will find out if that that's actually... That the son is still alive and no, now has superpowers? No, you will find out that that's his stepson. We're not in a Marvel movie. So, you will start like learning more about the characters. I know, it's still very sad that you lose the stepson, but, uh, but yeah. So, Matt Damon is not... Uh, at this point infected no, uh, like no that's the, that's the that's what we are all like worried about at this point that oh when does he get sick okay but um so at this so from now on you will see around the around the world and also in u.s people at the cdc are taking all the meetings meetings with the governments they are uh, trying to investigate the scope of the disease and uh so they will send people to, uh, they will dispatch uh, so what are they office. so can you recap what they're setting up now so that's essentially kind of like the intro right so mm-hmm. they you said they're they're talking about the spreading and the scope of yes. the disease they're setting up more of that now i guess yeah you, first you will see around the world that it's happening too and then you will see now at a center for disease control in like atlanta in u.s uh, the scientists are aware of that. Are they clear on what's going on, or uh, is the disease kind of a mystery okay. to them? Still? They don't really know what's yeah. going on. Yet. Yes, they don't know what's going yes, on. Yes, because it's yeah, so they, fast. They know that oh, like there, there, there have been cases around the world, and they try to investigate. And uh, you will see two scientists. One is Marian Cotillard, mm. that she's working with like the WHO in Geneva. Mm-hmm. So she sent uh, WHO sent her from uh, Geneva, uh, Geneva uh, to uh, like Hong Kong or like Asia to China. investigate the uh, the origin of the disease. Somewhere in China. Somewhere in China. Or, yeah, somewhere in China Wuhan. to investigate, and you will see in US uh, mm-hmm. um, the the person in charge of CDC who is like uh, played by Lawrence uh, her ca- uh, his character name was like Shiver Ellis, Ellis something oh yeah he this just call ca- him Morpheus Morpheus okay <laughs> so he sends Kate Winslet mm-hmm. um, to Minneapolis and other sites in US to investigate the cases in US okay so she, and also she's like a detective or something she's like also an uh, a scientist an epidemiologist mm-hmm. okay so she's like the front line investigator and trying to inform officials of what's happening yes in each states so 
one of the hilarious scene of this one of the most hilarious uh, scenes in this movie is when she's actually trying to explain to local governments in Minneapolis or I don't know where uh, the events take place so she tries to explain to them what they know about the virus and it was like and she quite gives, like a lesson to the to the audience through the um, government people like talking about uh, fomites and are not so okay. which are actual um, health terms and like okay. fomite is um, like surfaces that have like the bacteria on it that if you touch it you it gets yeah bacteria or virus so she's giving mm-hmm. some exposition Yes. on um the yeah. actual makeup and the um the potential magnitude that this disease can cause mm-hmm. yes and that's yeah and apparently those all the information that she is like giving the audience is so close to corona situation because uh she's talking about how this disease is spread uh through like cough and sneezing and touching surface and throughout uh, mm-hmm. people so i was really terrified and um do what? people like use wipes and wear masks and stuff in the <laughs> movie people did wear masks okay at some points i think yes um especially the healthcare workers i don't okay. think even the public wipes. you will see throughout the movie that people are wearing masks and i was like that's not uh, that's not reflective of reality nowadays because the masks are out of stock anywhere <laughs> everywhere so if this is happening no one has a mask right, right, right. Uh, so but yeah following the story yeah she tries to like uh, inform the uh, local government um about the seriousness of issues and uh and, you know you whenever her you have you see any of Kate Winslet scenes you just see you know like the pushback and people were like aren't you being kind of like ridiculous or overreacting oh so they set up like a new like a sub conflict because it sounds mm-hmm. like from what I've heard so far this is like yeah you guys know like uh there's like 36 dramatic situations right so this sounds mm-hmm, like yeah. it's being set up as like your disaster end of humanity mm-hmm. um thing but this sounds like a new subconflict. So yeah. Kate Winslet versus skeptics, I guess, or yeah. government. Um, yeah, let's say government, local governments, because you will see governments in uh, terms of like different levels, as we do have here. We have state government, I mean federal government, and we have the state. So on that particular th- uh, scene that she is explaining, she was explaining it to the state government. I mean, the local government of that state, yeah. and, and uh, they were just like, "It's all good." And don't people, blow shit out of proportion. And people were like, "Oh, don't announce anything before this weekend because it's Black Friday shopping." That sounds so. Familiar. They were like, "We don't want to disrupt life. We don't want to disrupt the economy." Uh, yeah, <laughs> and the other. A uh, funny part was that there was one moment, uh, one part later in the movie that Kate Winslet tries to convince uh, them to allocate gymnasium and uh, um, like gymnasium and like big uh, places to uh, like temporary hospitals or ho- t- temporary like care facilities for the people who are contagious oh. or who are infected. And the local government was like, so please clear us. Are we the people who are going to pay for this, or is it coming from you guys or the federal government? You can feel her exasperation, like that through the screen. (laughs) Jeez, yeah. How about we worry about the people first, and then the money? Yes, yes. Okay, so that sucks. Um, Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, In the first act, was any uh, other storylines introduced? Any other? Because I know that there's a huge cast, right? Yes. Who was another big name? that i remember so okay let me tell you this because your previous questions was about uh, matt damon or if he's like getting the disease so when you see kate winslet is going to the field he is actually doing um interview with matt damon about his wife and the places that she has been to because she tries to figure out uh, who uh, Gwyneth Paltrow has been in contact with prior so to Kate, his So death. Kate Winslet is like a detective slash, you know, doctor, yes. scientist, whatever. Yeah. And so, she's trying to piece together yes. the, the origins of the disease. Yeah, yeah so, and who might possibly be infected. Along so, the way. Okay. So at that moment, you will see Matt Damon in a quarantine uh, place. Uh, and she's, in, she's uh, um, I mean, Kate Winslet is interviewing him. And 
Kate Winslet is informing Matt Damon that for some reason uh, Matt Damon's body is immune to the virus because he hasn't been infected this long so probably he, he would have already yeah, yeah. He, he he has been somehow I'm not immune. a scientist but if he's immune can't they just like make some something from his he, blood he has, brought that up and the nurse who was interviewing him said that blood serums are very expensive and take a lot of time to make yes yeah. yes okay so maybe the rate of in, infection the rate of spread uh, it's not worth it for them to pursue a Matt Damon cure mm -hmm. yes uh, so what you i'm not a scientist again but vaccines are a different thing than like uh, something that you will like get based on like genetically uh, figuring out what's going on with matt damon so there are two different things so mm -hmm. okay so let's um we got two more acts to discuss right so any other characters by the way i think i remember in the cast there's um um he's handsome jude law yeah, um, yeah. The, that whole um, Jude Law is a journalist and like vlogger who tries to first he tries to like bring the story um, of a possible epidemic to a newspaper and they ignore him. Mm -hmm. And so he's like Alex Jones or something. I just hear like internet news. Yeah, he's 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 he, yeah internet news person. Okay, yeah, so. He's, he had and you throughout the movie you will get the sense that he is kind of like uh, he has a platform and he's a blogger and he okay, and so he's kind of like the government tells lies so did he know about the disease beforehand or oh conspiracy th so he's, he's big a, on conspiracy yes, theories yeah he's yes. okay conspiracy. i got it okay. See, so he, got apparently it. he is the first person who um saw a video from the man in china who got like uh, dead in the train or like a public transportation so he was the first person who get uh, the holds to that video oh, uh, who okay. has his hands on did he try it. and warn people or something or yeah he tries but you know he's he tried to sell the story yes he uh. tries to sell the story so he you will see his character as like the negative i mean or type of a villain in this Cause he kind of brings into the movie the conflict of like the spread of like panic and misinformation yes okay so so from what i understand so far first act uh sets up the scope um, on a so other than statistics on a personal level we mm -hmm. see it affect Matt Damon his wife and his kids mm -hmm. so we've got empathy there they continue to grow the scope and the mystery of the disease via the characters of Lawrence Fishburne Kate Winslet and I guess Marion uh, Cotillard yes uh, and then we're hearing um, a sort of like um, uh, a different voice a skeptic's voice to just start challenging the previous people we've seen mm -hmm. in yes. in the blogger in Jude Law. Did we did we talk about the who person? Uh, What's her name? Uh, Marianne Cotillard. Oh, okay. Yeah, you yeah. guys talked about her. I yeah. didn't know the actress's name. Yeah, that's the one that was Ra's al Ghul's okay. yeah. daughter yeah. in uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Uh, yeah. So, um, okay, so can we get into the second act then what 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 happens there what what is the second half about in in to set it up for me and then you can go into details okay everything explodes yes explodes yes, yes. Okay. things are getting out of control also mm -hmm. like scient on the scientist ends they try to know more about this virus and know what like it really turns into a pandemic yes okay a global pandemic mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe first act is all theories and, and shit's playing out now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Like the first stages of like this is um, an, a pandemic might be coming, um, trying to prepare or not prepare. And then the second mm -hmm. is when the pandemic happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, do they introduce any new uh, conflicts, sub-conflicts to kind of keep the momentum going on? Uh, yeah, Are there so, new questions being brought up? So back in China, uh, where Marianne Cotillard is trying to figure out uh, who is the index patient. And by index patient, we can refer to that as like also patient zero. is oh, the okay. first person who gets, uh, who is getting the virus. Mm -hmm. So that's usually the key in like... Um, pandemic like this to figure out more uh, about to figure out more information about the origin of the virus mm -hmm. this seems like it would be helpful where yes it started yeah so 
while uh, Marion Cotillard is uh, in China trying to figuring out stuff, uh, she's working with like uh, local government in China. And while there is a guy who is working closely with her and he's acting as like a translator. So you will figure, you will find out that that guy's whole family or village got impacted by the virus too. And that guy lost his mom. Uh-huh. So when uh, Marianne Cotillard kind of finished her like a mission uh, because she figured out that the patient zero is like going at Paltrow probably and uh, she, she's on her way to send out the information to WHO or who. And so she's in China and she's researching trying to find out who patient zero is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, um, and then she has a hypothesis that it came from China. But she's in China. Is she around Chinese people? Yes. Did she bring that up? And how did they respond? Uh, The response was like a quiet, like normal, I think. Yeah. They they, are cooperating. They didn't want to like make big announcements that would disturb society. Mm. So they were totally fine saying, oh, yeah, it probably came with China. Let's announce it to the world. It came from China. Okay. No. no, So here's the thing, because they know that it happens in China, but patient zero is going at Paltrow, which is an American. So, you know what I mean? It's not like that, that, oh, Chinese caused this or... So you don't see they that kind of... They weren't worried about that at all? I find that hard to believe. Um, yeah, but you don't see that kind of conflict that they want to hide or conceal the information. They are totally cooperating. They um, gave all the footage of like... Um, footage a camera footage of like a casino that uh is the last place that uh Gwyneth Paltrow has they're, been to they're cooperating China. but when she says she thinks they came from China there's no at all pushback cuz we see well, pushback they, now there isn't China sending information that like the disease was like a US military like disease it's happening today are they yeah no you know what but, but China never they, officially said that are you saying that now there is like legitimate news saying that Chinese president, China president saying that? It was I just you? always think that it's the natural inclination for people to try and push in blame. The, in, in the movie, they, they give the impression that they don't want to tell, like they don't want to tell society um, any of these things that she's finding out. Um, they want to keep it kind of hidden yeah, for they, now. Yeah. But then it kind of gets overtaken by another event mm-hmm. where... Um, like at this point in the movie you see like uh people in humanity starting to turn against each other okay but the initial response is like hey let's once again keep information kind of under wraps right yeah they did that earlier on with trying to hide like the severity and the scope because they don't want to do black friday but yeah you will see that in u.s and then but with the local government it sounds at least from from sarah's viewing that there was some pushback from china but, um, but their pushback is different. It's just like that they they have no problem with communicating the um, or let's say collaborating with the WHO by concealing the facts or not giving. Well, their to ra- WHO, but they're not going to go ahead and promulgate this to the world if they can help it, right? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, again, in this movie, you don't see that so much of maybe like concealing. We're, maybe we're getting caught up on on the details of that. Yeah, I just yeah, wanted clarification because, on because, that. Because because I think that this is not um, at least the. Uh, thing they try to communicate because you don't see first first of all any official like chinese uh you don't deal with like a large scale chinese government you just work with the local government in the scale of a city in uh in china so things will never like get to another scope in this movie and because as sarah says you will see another conflict and the conflict that happens in china is actually marian cotillard is getting kidnapped kidnapped mm-hmm. she ki- uh, she's getting kidnapped by the chinese but one, uh, one individual in china who was working for the government not for the sake of concealing the facts but for the sake of uh, um, using her as a leverage mm-hmm. as a hostage yeah, so as a hostage. he took he took her back to his home village and held her there so that um the world health organization would like trade her to four vaccines that he gave to everyone in the village because she's like that important or something they're yeah. like using her as a bargaining chip to get like first dibs uh-huh yes okay that yeah. makes sense yes 
desperation, right? What are you going to do? You worry about your family and the kids. Yes. He'll make you do some stupid shit. Yeah. Like I couldn't imagine kidnapping someone just to man. Okay. So, so, yeah, so that happens in act mm-hmm. two. Yeah. Yeah. This is where like you see society start to fall apart and things like lapse into chaos. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And they start like CDC tries to uh, like quarantine some cities. Mm-hmm. And you will see in this po- also in act two uh, part of like uh, internal conflict between uh, personal gain and like more uh, like ethical or professional gain because you see Lauren Fishman uh, sorry let's call him uh, what what do you want to Morpheus? refer to? Come Morpheus. On. Morpheus. Oh, okay, yeah. Morpheus. <laughs> or Fishburn. Yeah. Burning fish. Fishburn. Okay, Fishburn. Yeah, yeah. Lawrence Fishburn. He informs his fiance about the upcoming quarantine of Chicago, which he shouldn't. Wait, it's, wait. Let's right. back. Let's back up. I'm a little confused. So, Marion Cotillard is investigating, right? How mm-hmm. how is she investigating? Like what? Are they doing anything? Or like, are they doing flashbacks or something? Like, how how does she? They're know? looking at security footage okay. of um, Gwyneth Pat- Paltrow who attend who went to casinos in Macau. So like like all her, they're just tracking her movements through security cam. Okay, yeah, security that makes security. sense. Okay, yes. are okay. So are we in? Um, are we and so new sub conflicts to keep things interesting with uh, Marion getting kidnapped? Are we in Act mm-hmm. Three now? Uh, um, yes, I think that we should mention Kate Winslet in, act, in the beginning of Act yeah, 3. Yeah, I think, yeah, when does she, yeah. Yeah, I think it's in Act 3 when it's like, if we call the Act 3 is like society falling apart. Well, because also in Act 2, like you see like um, Morpheus, like he has, he, do, he does a bunch of news interviews, mm-hmm. but um, he'll never give an exact number of people who have died. They like never give the statistics because mm-hmm. um, it gives you the impression that they're trying to hide it. And meanwhile, you see mm-hmm. so many people getting sick and these like mass graves being dug mm-hmm. for all the dead. Yes, and like people looting stores and houses and like stealing supplies from each other, like fires, random fires. So just craziness. So like dystopian type world. Not there yet. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Yeah. All right. So they're not painting a pretty picture. Okay. So wh- why why did you mention uh, Kate Winslet? Like, uh, what, because she she her character also uh, she knows that she has the virus. She got the virus. She yeah. got the virus. So like that doctor in China about about COVID nineteen yeah. in Wuhan, the Wuhan doctor. Mm-hmm. So she got infected, mm-hmm. but she uh, has a super serum, right? So she uh, yeah, she has a super serum. Then Leo she becomes comes back super to rescue her. Howard, uh huh. This doesn't sound good. <laughs> so what happens to good old Kate? Um, she dies in one of like the gymnasiums that she set up um, for taking care of the sick. Mm-hmm. Dude, people like that are heroes, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that doctor in Wuhan. Like, I yeah. mean, obviously he had the ex- extra ordinary uh, step of having to deal with the Chinese government and censorship yeah. and being arrested but um, yeah just anyone who like it's mm-hmm. their job to go out in the field in in the middle of the storm yes and one thing that you will learn about her character is that even though she know she knows that she is severely sick and she knows that there is no cure for this disease she is constantly worries about the people who she has been in contact with prior yeah like she's staying in a hotel and then she wakes up like coughing and sick and she realizes that she has the virus and then she calls the hotel reception and she was like i need you to give me the names and phone numbers of everyone who serviced my room Mm. that's the first thing she did yes Huh. Then she informed that, her boss. Yeah, then she informed her um, Morpheus, her boss. So she was less worried about herself first. She wanted to see who serviced the room to track what she was there to, to do. Sounds yeah. like character development to me. Yeah. Okay, so mm-hmm. what else is going on? What happens with Act 3? Yeah, Act 3 is more about like the world falling apart. You will see Kate uh, Vincent is actually passing away in the gymnasium. 
if that could yeah. be the start of Act Three, and you will see Judla on the other hand um, having like more character development because he is now uh, trying to like you know in the past we know that he tries to uh, to in inject people uh, like public uh, public fear by saying that government is not upfront government is not honest but now he tries to also like tell people that he kind of discovers the cures but government he knows about the actual cure but government and cdc they don't want people what the actual cure is yeah he claims that he got sick and that he was taking this um homeopathic cure Mm -hmm. called like for cynthia Mm -hmm. yeah um yeah yeah Mm. okay so and that made him and that cured him he didn't die and he so it worked no, yeah, but that's he what he's saying. It. But he faked it. He never got the disease. Well, oh. he just... We don't know that... F- Do you think that he got the disease? I don't know. I felt like that he was the type of character... Especially... Do you remember in, in, there was a scene that he was mm-hmm. recording himself in front of so the there camera was, for So there was no audience. scenes that wrapped that up for sure? Well, he did at the... Towards the end of the movie, he did get brought in... By the okay, so it's in the air whether or not he he actually had the disease at this point, but he's yeah. saying that he had it and he had a cure, and no one's talking about it. Yes, because yeah. they want eventually the big money goes to big pocket of like uh, pharmaceutical. Is this is industry. this guy big? Does he have, like have a lot of like viewers? Followers, yes. Yeah, yeah, he has like twelve million followers. Okay, so yes. do people believe him on the what is it for Cynthia? People do believe him. Okay, yeah. and you see uh, this chilling scene of um people waiting in line at uh pharmacy pharmacy, wanting to get for cynthia and nurse and the workers tell them we're all out and then they storm dude how scary is that because alex Mm -hmm. jones was on the news about trying to sell like like cures and Mm -hmm. shit to um the coronavirus Mm -hmm. you know so he's a conspiracy theorist and Mm -hmm. Damn, Steven Soderbergh or whoever wrote the script is yeah they did their research fucking and pretty yay. on with like what what happens or what would happen on. yes it is because at that on. time like who knew about like Alex Jones mm-hmm. also you know but a yeah. conspiracy theorist blogger um you know like making money off of this fucking serious yeah, disease yeah this character made four million dollars off of what he was doing oh shit yeah yeah and. Okay, all right. So that's uh, oh, guys. an auspicious start to the um, to, <laughs> oh, another, to the final. Another act. thing that stood out to me when they were doing the news interviews um, with Morpheus, and he was telling everyone just practice Zone. social distancing. Oh, he did he use the he exact did use words? social distancing. He used social distancing, <laughs> washing your hands, washing your yeah, These not are the exact, shaking hands, not shaking it, and it's exactly what they're saying in the news. That's like all you can do, I guess, huh? Shit, yeah, because that's all they're telling us. Yeah, social yeah. distancing. Are we at the right distance? Like, oh. what is what is the distance again? Is it was it? Three feet, six feet, six feet. Six I've feet. heard six feet. Oh, we're not even two feet apart. Oh, you, I don't think you just you are, contaminated. I don't me. think you and I are even six feet apart. Oh yeah, that's true. Huh? <laughs> Damn it, people. All right, we're, all right, we're, all right. We're bad. Okay, back on track. So yeah. uh, the last, because uh, uh, we're about an hour in. So the last act. Let's get yeah. to. Uh, we we have a little bit of information with Jude, Jude Law. Uh, Jude Law's character and then well, what else happened in Act 3 are they well, so where are we at right now like um, did they fast forward are we still in the same time period what's going on uh, you will see a little bit of you you f- see time forward right every so often they have like a time time stamp like day 18 day 36 yeah day, day 100. 100 so what what do the streets look like at this point is it worse than what we're so living right now the streets are like littered with garbage and you see um everything looks like it's just been torn apart and you yes. see like empty public spaces like completely empty airports so and does it look dilapidated or just empty like but it does look post-apocalyptic it looks in yes. a way? It, it okay. definitely and the, one of the scariest thing is that you will see matt damon at one scene calling 911, and there is a tele there is a like a automatic prompt saying that oh if you have a dead body press this number oh mm-hmm. geez so, so, so. At this point, wait why death, is he calling 911 he saw one of his neighbor's houses getting maybe, getting attacked uh, yeah getting and attacked holy and shit and he has to deal with these fucking 
prompts on 911? He can't just get a hold of someone? Nope. There are too many. It's Fuck, is that going to happen to us? Too many calls. And they was like, oh, if you have a dead body, if you want to remove your dead, dead body, please press this number. It doesn't seem like they do anything guys, about the looting. You guys have seen that, right? Uh, shit, it was a small news clipping. I don't know where he posted it on Facebook or some so, so, some other social media. And I don't even know what country it is, but it was a haunting photo where he showed his sister had died and she was dead on the bed. And he was saying that he can't get a hold of, no one's come in to help to remove the body. Wow. And it's just there. I have, like, holy I have called 911 before and had no response. I remember during my um, undergrad, uh, my, friends, my friend's parents came to town or something and they were taking us out to a restaurant. Mm-hmm. We were driving by the hospital and um, there is this guy who was wearing a hospital gown that was like bloody and he was jumping in front of cars, assuming oh, only trying geez. to kill himself. And we called 911 and no one answered. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> and they're like, oh, we can't send someone out right now. UK police? No, this was in Erie. Erie, oh shit! In Erie, Pennsylvania. Can't, damn, you can't. What's going on? <laughs> Dude, I'm not. Shit, I'm not even. Oh man, I'm getting more worried. Yeah, this was. I don't know. This is maybe like six years ago or something. Yeah, but each system but, you have to figure it out. Each system has a capacity, and whether it's a healthcare, whether it's like uh, mm-hmm. first responders, whether it's like police departments, if you exhaust the system, this is the actual it, uh, outcome. And what is scary about pandemics is that everyone is talking about bell curve, flattening the curve, flat or flattening the curves because we all we want to do is to make sure that the peak of the bell curve is always below the capacity of the system. If you if you go beyond that, things will get will get ugly. Of course, mm-hmm. yeah. And in this, uh, okay, so if we want to like continue about the act uh, we kind of forget about to tell you about matt damon and his relationship with his daughter oh, because yeah. now <laughs> okay so let's see hold on okay so <laughs> he's totally forget he's, about he's him. immune his he's son immune. dies he's, his he wife's has a daughter. dead so all he has left is the daughter yeah yes. and they're living together i assume under quarantine yeah he won't let anyone inside their house okay and um you see um, like when during the looting and rioting, um, you see him like trying to go to the store and everyone's just like grabbing things off the shelves. Oh, shit. And the, a lot of the shelves are empty and um, you see people like try to steal gas from his car. No oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Um, are we close to that? Yeah. Damn. Okay. I so uh, his, I his, his daughter, she understands though, like what's going on, right? Or what's up? What's her deal? Um, she doesn't really take it seriously because she wants to meet with her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Uh, teenager. She's how old teenager. is she? She's a teenager? She's, I think she's like oh, 17 yeah. or 18 or something. That's all you care about at that time, I think right? that she's like 15, 16. 15, 16. Yeah. 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 I remember thinking, you know what? I, I, I want to see my girlfriend. I'll fucking walk on the freeway and yeah. across it to get to where I wasn't driving at the and time. You do dumb, dumb, dumb shit. You <laughs> do. Because she thinks that she was like, oh, dad, you're immune. So I'm probably immune too. Mm-hmm. Also, we want to feed you up with a little bit of piece of information from mm-hmm. the beginning of the movie. If you remember, we told you that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is talking on phone with someone. And oh, at this yeah, stage yeah. in the movie, suspicious, right? Because it wasn't Matt Damon's voice, right? Yes, yes, so her at, husband. Yeah. So at this stage, you know that Gwyneth Paltrow has a layover stop in Chicago uh-huh. to have sex with his former lover. Bitch! Oh, <sighs> cheater! Yes. Oh. And that poor guy also. He died. Got, he died. A, a very. Like early in the movie, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, no, no comment. Cheat, yeah, so it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hate cheaters. Okay, well, that complicates her character because I thought she was just a good wife, but um, well, yeah, and that brings something interesting then for for Matt Damon. Then how he finds out, right? Uh, I so he has to. He has yeah, he's yeah, suspicious. Yeah, I think he finds out because you see this scene um, before they show you all the mass graves. Um, you see the scene. 
um, him trying to arrange things at a funeral home. So he's like, oh, well, I want to have a proper funeral and bury my wife. Mm-hmm. And um, the f- the f- um, funeral home will, is like, no, we can't do that. Like, like this thing might spread. It's unsafe. Mm-hmm. And then you see him explaining that to Gwyneth Paltrow's mother. And the mother is just like, um, oh, you know, uh, she loved you. She might have made mistakes, but I know she cared well, for you. Wasn't you mentioned earlier that there was a detective who interviewed him, right? Uh-huh. So she would have had access to her itinerary and flight plan. So she never brought that up to Matt Damon, uh, saying, "So here's she, the deal: who, who would she have stopped uh, in okay. Chicago to see? Because so, you said the guy is from Chicago, right? Yes. Yeah. So actually, so that didn't happen. There wasn't much interaction between." No, the them, thing right? No, the thing is that Kate, if you remember there was this discussion between Kate Winslet asking questions from Matt Damon if uh, Gwyneth Paltrow has anyone in uh, like uh, Chicago and Matt Damon was upfront like oh my wife uh, knows this guy nailed something and they they used to be lovers I mean they used to be together is that why my die had the layover in the uh, in the Chicago okay so we have that scene we have the scene at the about the funeral with the mother so Mm -hmm. it's so just imagine yes he just lost his wife Mm -hmm. who he probably loves like does she seem like a loving guy yeah Yeah, so he probably loves his wife lost the wife loves loves his son lost the son Mm -hmm. has to take care of his daughter and then while protecting her deal with the fact that holy sh- maybe my wife was cheating on me yeah that's a yes. lot to fucking handle okay yeah. yeah but you will see also kate winslet um didn't disclose the name of the uh, person because at the uh, at that moment kate winslet knows who are dead people uh, in chicago and he she recognized the name that matt damon mentioned mm-hmm. immediately as like mm-hmm. a dead a dead person or an infected. So it makes sense. He was the guy that she saw. Yes. So okay. so everything was full circle, but like uh, professional integrity didn't let Kate Winslet Damn, to how would I disclose deal with that? this. I just found out the person. Just, just imagine that you found out the person you love died, and then a little bit after, mm-hmm. uh died, and then also cheated on you yeah. recently. And fuck, then meanwhile, that would fuck me up. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're dealing with trying to protect your daughter and yes. with looting and rioting and society falling apart. Yes. And it reminds me of you ever seen the uh, George Clooney movie, The Descendants? Oh yeah. Yeah, it was a similar storyline there. Yes. Like, but she was on life support. Um, yes. Um, but you know, she cheated on him, and he had to come to terms with it. And yeah. wow. Okay. All right. So there's this storyline. Mm-hmm. So in Act Three, I guess you guys are bringing the daughter up because we revisit that or something like that. So wait, wait. So uh, post-apocalyptic world, you guys have painted a picture for me. Are they at all close to getting a cure at all? Yes. At this point, I think that yeah, they've has- been testing um, possible vaccines on monkeys. Okay. And um, monkeys, they get up to monkeys. vaccine like number fifty-seven that they fifty-one, te- fifty-one, yeah, Gee. something. That oh, maybe fifty-seven or fifty-one. So fifty-plus vaccines. Fifty, yeah, plus right. 50 so plus vaccines. So a good amount of time must have passed, right? Yes. Since and I don't know how long it takes to make a vaccine, but we are in the number fifties already. So and they explained in the movie that vaccines take a really long time because you um, first they had to figure out how to reproduce the disease so they could experiment with it and then they had to do the trials and then on long buckies and then the trials on humans Mm -hmm. so this is not a quick thing yes and uh it's not a quick thing and the conflict here is that since they have to now try on like human beings and they don't have enough time it just like takes forever it seems to like produce the vaccine so you will see one researcher at CDC uh, just takes this bold action to inject herself oh. with the vaccine, with the last version of the vaccine. Yeah, and then test it by going herself. out to... Yes. And you will see that she goes to hospital and uh, she meets with her sick father who happens mm. to be also a doctor. And the reason that her father is sick is also because he was the only person who decided to continue taking care of his patients while all other doctors decided to quit. So that researcher told his father that, oh, 
father you are my role model and you always uh, told me the story of the other scientist who test like a vaccine mm-hmm. on himself so he oh could is find- that where she got the idea from yes yeah. so so they've got so it works yes yeah okay it works okay they so. find this vaccine about like an hour and 15 minutes into the movie yeah and it's like so an hour and 45 like minute movie hour 45 minutes so in 30 minutes everyone gets a vaccine well then they have to decide how to distribute it and the movie only focuses on um how the u.s does it it doesn't really talk about so yes. how, how is the u.s gonna do it like how is this hard to produce this vaccine yes, so. because you will hear like from you from the news that this vaccine is produced on like three like um secret locations in the u.s only uh-huh. and you know also in china if you remember we have marian cotillard kidnapped by the village people mm-hmm. and they are like desperate mm-hmm. for the vaccine and they the only reason they had her is just to get the first batch of the vaccines did they, they, okay so did it work did they get it um you will see the exchange scene where uh, the village person supposed to exchange you it will up. say the you will see the exchange makes me think that they didn't really get fucking what they wanted well that's accurate yeah that's accurate they yeah. hand over the they supposed box of yes yeah Damn. and you will see while uh, marion cotillard is like now in an airport with another official from the one who uh, came to rescue her okay, yeah uh he told her that oh because we couldn't give they we get them placebos which is like fake medicine. Literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. They, uh, they, uh, we give, we gave them placebos because U.S. doesn't want other like. I thought it was because the Chinese government said not to. Was it? I, I, I don't remember the specific like thing, but they said that they had worries that they don't want this like vaccine in the hand so of he, others, and, that, and he, that people were kidnapping officials all over the world. Oh, so oh he, yes, yes. So what happened when he told Marion? Uh, she got upset she, she got went. upset and, and ran away so i okay wait so set this up then she was kidnapped was she happy she got kidnapped have you ever heard of stockholm syndrome that yeah. you fell in love with your like so kidnappers? are you so you're saying that that happened to her so she wasn't like on board with the kidnapping at all but but she was just but kind she of... but she got upset at the end so yeah. she fell for the village yes. yeah because she was you see this like little scene of her like teaching uh, a class of children in the village so i think she, got she attached. Oh, tell me about her character was she like set up in any way like was she uh, an always caring character like matt damon you see when um she's introduced and the chinese person that she's working with tells her that his mother um is sick she like she feels bad you can tell she feels bad for him yeah uh-huh. she's a caring person you you mm-hmm. generally see all the scientists in this movie so in she, very you caring. didn't read that scene as like a little cold and distant like did she ask follow-up questions about oh how how is your i want to know i'm interested because mm-hmm. I, I know some people when, when i interact maybe it's uncomfortable for them so they leave it at you know like uh you know how how are you know how's your so-and-so oh this person's not feeling well oh that's too bad yeah. i hope the best for me but there are other people who are like whoa wait what's going on so how do, how do, mm-hmm. how does she feel like mm-hmm. is she that interested in mm-hmm. in caring or was she just being polite i think that in the scope of this movie the i mean in terms of the scale that this movie goes into character development from what you see uh, at least from her side you can't say that oh she's a caring person because you know this movie is not delving into character developments that much so if she's asking even two follow-ups question that's it that's the way that they're signaling that her character is a caring character and yeah i feel that the answer to your question is that she is caring because she got upset when she heard uh, when she heard the news about the village people and she offered her condolences for the other person who lost her mother so she wasn't distant for my my question is because they didn't show her after she um got upset and left did she like go back to the village i feel like i feel like to tell them what is she telling like did she bring anything back with her no no but she 
But here is the deal. Because he said that he gave her a placebo, right? Yes. That yeah. they gave them the placebo. Did he offer her the real stuff? He offered her a vial of the real stuff. Okay. So did she have it in her hands? Um, did she run with it? Uh, so here is the deal. I think that as soon as she heard the news, she just ran away to inform the village. Uh, I don't believe that you see that she's actually holding on to the vaccine because at this okay. moment she doesn't care about herself. She just want uh, she wants to warn uh -huh. the village, and I kind of get her mentality because now she wants she develops uh, she develops a connection with the people there. She loves the children there, and mm -hmm. she doesn't want them to be in danger because if uh, the people at the village they think that all they all receive the vaccines, they just go out in the world and like they might get sick. Mm -hmm. So she wants to go back uh, them to dinner at least and tell them that you are not safe. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what happened. And I don't mm -hmm. believe that she carries the vaccine or she just like left as soon as she hears the information. Okay, so what else? It sounds like she's a big character, so we don't need to concentrate on her um, that much more. Who who, mm -hmm. who else is going on? This is the final act, right? So not only should we kind of wrap up our mm -hmm. um, podcast, but let's wrap up the story. Who Whose story arcs did they wrap up then in the final act? So it sounds like there's a vaccine. Mm -hmm. Not everyone can get it, so they're going to time it out. Yes. Um, who who are the other storylines? Um, let me spin them out for you then. Um, um, so we talked about Marion, mm -hmm. Kate Winslet died. What about Lawrence Fishburne, who Kate was working with? What did they wrap up anything with him? What went on with him in the last act? Yes, uh, you will see a softer side of him uh, because when the vaccine came out, all the officials has the opportunity to get the vaccines for themselves, mm -hmm. and Lauren. Uh, also got the vaccines for himself and his wife mm -hmm. well before his, that his he, he came under scrutiny for telling his wife um about the quarantine that was going to go into effect in, in chicago mm -hmm. before it went into effect and oh, okay. him so telling like her no to no. leave okay yeah but because yeah. they had no one to replace him they couldn't proceed with the uh, prosecution at that time, but they said that you will be under investigation. Yeah, and they're going to try him mm -hmm. after everything is over. over. They're going to yes. scapegoat him. Okay, you guys yeah. uh, talk some more. I'm going to get a battery. Oh, okay. Yeah, so at this point, you will see uh, Lauren. Yeah. yeah, and you see um, him give the vaccine he was supposed to take to the son of the janitor who overheard him... Um, telling his wife to get out of Chicago. Um, so so who overheard him committing the act that he will be tried for? So that's like a that's like a no-no then, huh? You can't yeah. like give advance warning? To yeah, you can't release that information. Yes, because it's an insider information. And that's when I said that you will see the conflict between personal gain and kind of like moral or professional. Yeah, like ethics. protecting the people that you love. Versus like your obligations that are coming from your job. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, but at the uh, end, he, so did he get an extra vial for that dude that he gave the medicine to? No, he get his own. So he received oh, only two. Oh, he gave two his own. Because the, all the officials get, get the vaccine first. Oh, wow. Yes. That's nice. So, I wish I had a Lawrence Fishburne in my life. Yeah yeah so okay so i know what happens with him i know what happens with um okay matt damon well what what do we where are we at with him by the end uh okay do you want to well first we should say that um the u.s decided to distribute the vaccine by a birthday lottery okay so yeah they just chose random days um so like the first birthday was like people who were born on march 20th get the vaccine first gotcha gotcha that Ooh, kind of thing i wonder if that's Ooh. what would happen with us probably I mean, not how do you how do you uh, how do you distribute a vaccine it must be lottery right it Otherwise, must be a lottery yeah the, on such a large scale when yeah. you can't um, uh, distribute especially it all with at once. like limited supply i mean uh, obviously the rich and the powerful are going to somehow get their hands on it but after yeah. that it, yeah. it would only make sense if the supply is low enough to do something yeah with the but you know what i think that at this moment with like something like flu seasonal flu uh which is like more common than coronavirus 
it might not sound as scary because of the news, uh, but um, actually the seasonal uh, flu has like more victims every year than coronavirus and as we know i understand that i was just thinking like and if it, this happened in real life like is does the lottery make sense that's where i'm coming from but you know there is no lottery for like getting like flu vaccines the and the flu vaccines are no, like no, no, produced no. Guess, every you know, what like i'm saying year. is not the flu i'm saying if this hap if that contagion whatever the virus happened in real life would it make sense to do a lottery that makes sense that makes mm-hmm. sense it does but i also think that um not everyone goes to get the flu shot at once yeah and i'm not comparing the contagion yeah. virus to uh yeah yeah to the i flu get what you are saying to the coronavirus it's yeah. just an interesting thing to hear that they went through a birthday lottery mm-hmm. okay yeah all right so wh- and then what s- happened you see like them um on tv doing the birthday lottery through like matt damon's household uh, which is another thing I actually think is cool about this movie because you see like the characters watching all this news and stuff in mm-hmm. their homes, so just like we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they just essentially have to wait until they can both get vaccinated. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> That's uh, the end uh, of the Matt Damon storyline. Oh, uh, you that see, seems like so you see a sweet moment where he tra- he sets up like this prom night for his daughter in the living room, and he invites the boyfriend who's been uh, vaccinated okay. over because he didn't want them to interact at all before, right? Yeah. Yes. So yes. he he loosened up a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. And you also see him. Um, he's like getting. He's like, oh, I need to get the camera because uh-huh. you know his daughter's all dressed up. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and then you see him looking through photos that. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow took on her last trip right before she died mm-hmm. and he's you know crying because he's grieving yes he's oh, grieving. so wow it took him that long to well I don't know if he cried earlier but it took him that long to find the camera yeah it took him that long for us to, to see his grief over his wife because I think um, by that time where they were distributed the vaccine maybe things had calmed down enough that right. he was like I can like grieve now yeah, yeah. that seems a lot of like good character stuff with um with matt damon then. yeah okay um and from that scene you have to kind of the final um like shot of uh how the whole story and virus begins to before you get there then because you're going to talk about the very last shots are you talking about the last like Cause minute I, of the movie uh, uh, yeah because it's because i don't right know because uh, like, i don't Matt know damon. what happened with jude law's character can you guys fill me in on jude uh, law Oh yeah, he got um, apprehended yeah. by um, the government, and they're going to prosecute him for spreading misinformation and faking conspiracies. His, yeah, and faking his like, and uh. and because they don't, the government doesn't believe that he had um, the virus. Okay, all right. So, so he gets his comeuppance. Then he didn't get away with it. Um, he got bailed out by his followers. Fuck. And you just get left hanging on like how his prosecution will go so did yeah. he he get to pocket that four mil the guy who's prosecuting him says that he won't be able to keep it but Jeez. we don't know mm-hmm. yeah. i don't know rich people have a way too so. they do okay um oh, stupidity well and then you also see um the scene with the scientists who developed the vaccine and um you know the the Man. one that cheever interacts with oh okay and she's and you just see um Cheever telling her like take a rest you're a hero you saved millions of lives yeah. okay so we know yeah. so we know what happened to um Jude Law so wh- what did they end with what I think you were trying to talk about that yes because uh, as Sarah said Matt Damon in the final scene uh was able to found the camera Okay. Uh, to find the camera and he was as he was reviewing the photos of uh, Gwyneth Paltrow you have like a flashback to what actually happened in China oh okay and you will see like uh, the same company that Gwyneth Paltrow was working with uh-huh. uh, the bulldozers are like the trucks are like, um, They're like ruining this- that forest and habitat of like bats and the bats is it fucking bats? Yes. It's bats. Wasn't coronavirus bats or COVID-19? Is this it? Last yes. Strain? I think it's bats. Yeah, bats in the wet markets yeah, of, like of Wuhan. Causing deforestation and environmental destruction. Yes. Shit. Yes. And then like the bats. Fucking like Nostradamus. Yes. All right, so bats 
So it was bats that did it, or what? Okay, yeah, Tr- it's both bats and pigs. So throughout the movie, actually, it's one of the information that you have been given that this virus is so novel and so destructive because not only it has like the genetic like uh, identifiers from bats, but it uh-huh. also has from the pigs identifiers and they were like wondering how it happens but in the final scene you will see because of the far, uh, deforestation a bat uh, habitat got destroyed so the disturbed bat uh, went to like uh, the st- pig sty and yeah and then like the bat like pooped into like where the pigs were living yes and it got um, into the pigs and then you see oh, man. Them, the farmers taking the pigs to like um restaurants and you see the chef like touching the pig that had the droppings in it and then you see the chef taking a picture with Gwyneth Paltrow he didn't wash his hands no he not he he wiped his hands on his apron (sighs) yes man you gotta wash your hands if you work in the kitchen before you go out and touch other shit yeah oh so it was a Chinese chef that did it well, he transmitted and a Chinese it. pig. He transmitted it. And a and a Chinese bat. I'm presu- I'm guessing that he also died, unless he was immune, like Matt yes. Damon. Yes, I think that uh, if you want to look for the blame, it's uh, the you know, you know, causing distress for the environment and the American yeah. company. I mean, the company that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow was working for caused the whole story. So yeah, no, I don't think anything like this. It's like you can really put the po- put the finger yeah. on someone yeah, and say you know, that no, oh no no yeah. i mean no one with the right mind who can foresee something like this happening you know, i was what? i was reading though that um it is common knowledge for um health officials that like disturbing bat bats um where the bats live mm-hmm. bat habitats um is can be very devastating mm-hmm. and produ- yeah. and it can actually happen that. Uh, yeah, yeah, virus yeah. can actually happen from that it's crazy you know nature has a way too so i forgot who brought it up but you know like anytime things are getting out of control you know one of these guys can pop up um to yeah. kind of bring things back especially in a place populated like that like wuhan and the wet markets around yeah. there mm-hmm. nature man Ugh. oh okay all right i have some uh recap questions that i prepared okay um, so try us um did any performances stand out acting wise to you guys i mean like was it well acted yeah it was yeah well it acted. was well acted mm-hmm. okay. from what you see <laughs> the, from the actor on the short amount of time that you see each on screen yeah it was well acted yeah okay yeah so i mean people have to realize that doing these like large ensemble um type movies are very difficult to pull off Mm -hmm. you know um you know at least with the avengers movies they all had single movies Mm -hmm. where you can get character backstory and get some Mm -hmm. sort of uh investment into Mm -hmm. some of these individuals so but even though like they didn't spend a ton of time with any one character i still felt um sympathetic yes towards right well i'm them. sure soderbergh is a mm-hmm. brilliant director so i know mm-hmm. i know that he um does things to develop mm-hmm. these characters and uh, make you feel some sort of empathy otherwise it yeah. would be a, a a pointless and not engaging movie and i think mm-hmm. this was a well-received one i like yeah it, it was I like a box everything hit. soderbergh soderbergh is just fucking amazing but he did the same thing with the oceans crew yeah you know like that's 11 people but yeah. they all had that's personalities true. and mm-hmm. So I know it was difficult, but yeah, but no, there was no like standout performance or anything. Matt I'm just Damon wondering. For me. Yeah, Matt, you like yeah. Matt? Yeah, yeah, I like, I like Matt. Damon. Kate, Kate Winslet you can did an amazing Kate, job. Yeah, Kate Winslet. I mean, I think everyone was good. Surprisingly, with the amount that okay. you got. With yeah, them. like all the all the mains. Yes. Okay. Like, we're all uh, great. Yeah, Mar- uh, Marianne Cotillard. I I love her. Especially yeah, I feel me like that with the short. <laughs> Yeah, with the short amount of uh, mm-hmm. time that we we have uh, with her, I I love I love her performance, and I felt the sympathy, and I felt the stress that she got for the people of the village at the very. I feel the stress and sadness that she got for the people of the village. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I was embarrassed of myself for some reason, but I don't know. <laughs> I shouldn't be the one who is embarrassed. It should be the people who got the plus people. Pulled it out of air. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, uh, so how was the story overall? I, this might not be fair because obviously it's pertinent to us, but mm-hmm. like, was it engaging? Uh, did the movie flow? Yeah, it flowed. It was very, I think the pacing was really good. Uh-huh. And I think the use of music um, oh, yeah. was really like gripping. Great, because yes. those were questions. So um, why don't you talk about pacing, editing, and sound design? Um, I had those. Like, the, you liked the pacing? Was it quick? It was quick, and they kept switching between um, all the different storylines, which is what makes it kind of hard to, like, summarize. But it was easy yes. to follow for some reason. But it was confused. easy to follow. It was very easy I wasn't to follow. Confused. Yeah, it's not a confusing... It wasn't a confusing movie at all. Mm-hmm. And especially because, you know, they had, like... A, when they switch between locations, they always had the the day that the timeline, the sense okay. of time that when yeah. it's happening and where it's happening. So it was helpful. That's why, yeah, it it gives me kind of like a duck. It gave yeah, it gave me a documentary vibe, which wasn't. A doc- I know it's not. It wasn't a documentary, but it seems like everything played out really well. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, he did. Um, Soderbergh did one with. Um, oh man, I forgot what it was called. That was very. We can probably do a whole topic on on Soderbergh. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, s- what about the cinematography? How was it shot? Uh, how do you guys like it? Was it special uh, in any way, or uh, um, uh, they, it was just they used good. a lot of um, uh, uh, folk, out of focus techniques, and especially when you were when they were focusing on someone who was sick in the beginning, mm-hmm. everything was blurry and o- and overly bright. So you're kind of seeing from the um, perspective of the sick person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So thumbs up on that too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Were there any weaknesses or plot holes that stood out to you? Or was this a, a fairly tight movie? It was a tight, fairly tight movie for me. I don't know how they could improve it because to me it's more like that they try to cover different aspects of a pandemic like this and they Mm -hmm. did a good job because they 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 had like uh, a a representative of like a regular people which was Matt Damon we saw the scientist side we saw government we saw we saw uh, we saw government both in the positive lights and also negative sides we saw role of media in that and we saw like people like Jude Law I think they did a good job because they you know they uh, analyzed the whole scope of like a pandemic like Mm -hmm. that so gotcha okay so um, just two more left Um, why don't I ask this first then how do you guys I know we were discussing throughout this entire Mm -hmm. podcast like how with the similarities and how it kind of relates us today Mm -hmm. but any final thoughts on this movie and how you know anything we can learn from the movie as it pertains to our our you know global situation today Uh, I mean I think we can learn that there's no such thing as an overreaction Okay. Because by taking preventative measures in the beginning, you avoid all that stuff you see in the movie, like where, um, I don't know, was it like 5 million people died or something? At the end? At the end, How it was 26 20, million. 26 million. Wow. Oh, I was way 26 off. 26 or 25. I wrote it somewhere. At one point, they said that like 2.5 million people in the U.S. died. Um, Boy. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, globally, the overall uh, de- uh, death toll for this disease was 26 million. Yeah. Jeez but you can, f- like, watching the movie, I just get the sense of, like, how easy it, it is for society to unravel. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, but if we, like, take the preventative measures seriously, then it'll be fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, luckily, we, we have a whole department dedicated to uh, pandemics, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Right? Uh, we still have that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't take responsibility. Oh, God. I wasn't the one who just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just got fucking coronavirus on my glasses. <laughs> From who? From yourselves? <laughs> I just don't know how to drink out of a fucking cup. So I... Sp- oh, clumsy. Yeah, don't let the exterior fool you. I'm a fucking... Um, the other like takeaway for me in this movie was like that how little things is important mm-hmm. like taking care of your family 
and um that's always important huh yeah, and yeah. we always forget but okay go on but how how important or how difficult it would be sometimes to like control the, your loved ones like the struggle that matt damon has with his daughter i feel like that that's the struggle that i have every day with my parents from the very long uh, distance like yeah. i always try to them please stay home don't meet people you can never know who yeah. who can be a, the hidden uh, carrier of this virus so Iran's don't go hit pretty hard huh yeah yeah your parents are doing okay though yeah, they are like uh, doing home. Uh, they they are staying at home and they try to like not have as much as interaction with other people. So yeah, but the situation is not good because the the system, the healthcare system is, is like unfortunately is like, is exhausted in Iran. So they don't have any more. Uh, they say they they say the government says that they have the capacity to treat more patients but we think that's not the truth and unfortunately things in uh, iran and italy it's very frightening so that's why u.s is taking things very seriously and i'm very proud that in state of ohio things are getting very seriously and people are already super careful yeah 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 no interesting scary times i was not uh, taking this seriously uh, a week ago but things happen Neither so so quick all right my last question for you guys is would you recommend i or someone who's listened to this podcast this entire thing hearing this story still go ahead and rewatch or watch the movie contagion well if you've made it this far then yes yes i feel like that this is an urgent movie for the current situation just see this is the bar we're trying to set up you know the entire story how good is this movie is it still worth viewing i think it is still i think it still is worth viewing because okay. there's so many like details and like shots that are so interesting yeah okay um, cool yeah. and yeah. you yeah i feel like that please go watch it see man we need a rating system for you for like the two who are describing it it's like two pinkies up i guess mm -hmm. two air thumbs or i don't know how to so you guys so both approvals both say yes and yes yes worth watching even though if, you, yes. if you've seen it a while ago yes watch it again yeah. because you will find many details that you feel like that they are so accurate and I feel like that teaching people about the outcome of like um, the potential outcome of uh, disruption in social order is a beneficial thing because people can be more cautious of each, each other. So, for example, mm -hmm. if you are at a grocery store and you see other people are impatient or they are frustrated, instead of being mean to them and telling them, oh, please stay in a line, try to be like kind of like soft show show try to show a softer side to them try to show them that you are coming from a place of empathy so say so maybe saying something to them like that oh i want to also stay in a line so can i stand behind you or can i rely on you or things like that is could be like helping the society or the community to not fall apart that easily yeah yeah no i agree with that that's a good message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, stay curious, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what everyone is going through in their heads. And we're not mind readers, too. So crazy stuff is going on. Um, we just are going to try and do our best. But thank you guys yeah. for both explaining to me. Mm -hmm. Uh, the movie Contagion uh, and thank you guys for watching through uh, let us know anything anything mm -hmm. are you feeling weird feeling scared have any stories I don't know yeah. any thoughts did we miss anything on Contagion um, any thoughts on the COVID-19 uh, we're really just you know well, I don't know about these two, but I'm like forever bored now. So I'll be on and able to answer questions. Mm -hmm. It's not like I can go out to a game. 
<laughs> no, it's and not like we can go like, okay. out to a restaurant or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But I, we like sincerely hope that you guys are doing well and healthy. Mm-hmm. I've made light of this in the past, but you know what? Anyone that's over prepared, kudos to you. You did the right thing. Um, so stay safe, stay clean, mm-hmm. stay healthy. We're wishing you the best, um, and we'll see you next time. Wait, bye. 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 All right, high five without touching. Oh, air five. No. All right. Air <laughs> five. Are you social distancing? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're like way too close to each other, so we're all infected. Yes. But hey, we've hijacked our own video to talk to you because we do seriously have an amazing offer for you mm-hmm. while you're stuck at home, in traffic, at the gym, or not working at work. It's us. You might be asking, are there any potential side effects to following us? Well, we have great news for you. Other than some mild diarrhea, there are no side effects. So please feel free to like and subscribe. Ask these people. Yeah, hit yeah. that button. We want to hear from you. It's so easy. Mm-hmm. And you will not get disappointed. Yes. Please cut that last part. <laughs>